A very warm welcome to this afternoon's virtual open day for the Courtauld Graduate Diploma in the History of Art. Uh, my name is Dr. Theresa Lane and I'm head of the Graduate Diploma Programme here at the Courtauld. And I'd also like to introduce my colleague, uh, Taka, who is here with me um, and who is responsible for um, postgraduate admissions. Taka and I are going to be um, sharing the presentation this afternoon. I'm going to be speaking to you for the first part uh, of our presentation, and then Taka is going to be uh, addressing specifically questions related to admissions. So um, he'll turn his camera off in a minute, but we'll see you soon, Taka. Um, can I ask um, participants um, who, are, who are listening and who have questions to please use the Q&A function um, on Zoom. Um, if you can just um, tap in your questions um, for myself um, or Taka, um, it will enable us to, to keep an eye on them as the session progresses and, and to deal with them. Um, we'll have a Q &A, a time for Q&A uh, session at the end. So let's get going. So what I'm hoping to address and, and to talk about with you this afternoon are these two questions that I'm guessing you're pondering um, in this next stage of, of your um, career and life planning. Uh, why uh, study at the Courtauld and why study the Courtauld Graduate Diploma in the History of Art? And these are uh, two questions which um, we will explore through a consideration of what the Courtauld as an institute, as an, as an educational um, university has to offer, but also specifically what the course has to offer and what it is about the graduate diploma that um, may be appealing to you. So let's think about, first of all, the Courtauld. Uh, which uh, I'm sure you, you're all familiar with. And um, we have this very nice comment um, afforded us by the Independent University Guide, which tells you that we are the only place um, in this country to specialize solely in art history. So coming here, you know that you are coming to a place where everybody, staff and students are all geared towards and passionate about the study of art history. We're small by other university standards because we are a single single subject um, institution, but there are around 600 students that study here from undergraduates. Um, we have the um, BA um, undergraduate program right through to the um, PhD program. The Courtauld Graduate Diploma in the History of Art varies, but usually um, there are around 30 students who, who join the cohort each year. In addition to the student cohort, of course, we have our permanent faculty of around 36 with unrivaled breadth of, of teaching and experience. And the great thing about the faculty here and the way that the courses are structured at the Courtauld on the diploma and more broadly, is that faculty are able to teach into subjects that they're actively researching. And this is really exciting for both faculty and students. The other great thing about studying at the Courtauld is the opportunity to be in London. And of course, that gives us access to world leading galleries and collections. And the programmes that are taught here lean very heavily on using these resources. So you would expect to be visiting places like, for example, the British Museum or the National Gallery, um, or indeed the, the, the gallery at the Courtauld itself, which I'll, I'll talk about separately. You'll also have the um, most of your teaching happening in Vernon Square, where I'm speaking to you now, um, just near King's Cross. But we also have a campus at Somerset House, which is where our gallery and conservation facilities are. As I've said, teaching is led by research professionals, and this is what really, I think, differentiates the offering at the Courtauld. And the wonderful ability to engage closely with the art and collections at the gallery. I'm going to be um, taking students there myself, and it is a wonderful resource which academics here make good use of. This just gives you a bit more background about what it is about the gallery that makes it so suited to teaching. And of course, we have a brilliant collection of art. Um, many of you will be familiar with our Impressionist and Post-Impressionist works. Um, those are probably the, the most visible um, in terms of um, our brand. But um, I'd also point out to you, and speaking here as someone who teaches and, and um, studies the Middle Ages, the collection is very broad and starts with objects from the Middle Ages, early Renaissance, and goes right through to, to now, um, to, to contemporary art. 
In addition to the permanent collection at the gallery, we also have a, a very diverse and vibrant program of temporary exhibitions and just uh, a few um, recent examples on the screen now currently Claudette Johnson uh, which is a great show um, do go if you are in London and have the chance teaching where possible takes place in the gallery and in October of this year I took the current cohort of the graduate diploma students to the gallery and we spent the second half of our induction during welcome week in the gallery in front of one of the wonderful Botticelli uh, altarpieces, which is held in the collection and spent an hour in front of this looking and closely analysing what the painting could tell us. In addition to the collection, there's also the prints and studies, uh, prints and drawing study room and the object study room. And when I take students to the gallery um, next week, um, I'm going to be using the object study room and we're going to be looking at some of the ivories, medieval ivories that are in the permanent collection. And what's great here is whilst some of these objects are on display in the gallery, others are not. And these ones that are held back um, and not seen by the public are the ones that um, myself and other academics are able to use and, and use as teaching aids when, when we're in the gallery and in the study rooms. The other thing just to point out about the Courtauld is, as I've said, we are a single subject, therefore a smaller institution, but we now have a strategic partnership with King's College from about, um, I think, about 18 months ago. And in terms of how that will enhance your experience coming as a graduate diploma student, basically it offers up a, a huge range of resources um, through King's. Um, and that can range from libraries um, and different places to work, but also um, the social side of things as well. And that's something which our current cohort of students um, are enjoying dipping into. So I want to talk now about the Courtauld experience itself and, and what you can expect uh, if you apply and, and join us on the, the, um, the program here. The graduate diploma itself is a nine month concentrated form of the undergraduate degree. Those of you that are familiar with um, training for a, um, a lawyer in this country, we have a, a similar system whereby um, non graduates of non-law can do a fast track uh, law degree in a year as a sort of diploma. And, and our graduate diploma is a sort of equivalent, but in history of art. And what the graduate diploma offers is graduates of other disciplines, um, the opportunity to transfer their existing skills to the history of art. And it is particularly suitable for those who are returning to higher education. Um, so perhaps those who've been out of university for a while or those who are wanting to gain a, a broad overview of art history. I am a really um, passionate advocate of this programme and that's partly because I am a graduate of it myself. I came here in 2014 as a graduate diploma student. And I think my experience um, with my fellow um, students is as typical as it is for those students who have just started with us in October this year. And by that, I mean the cohorts that are attracted by the Courtauld and that join the Graduate Diploma Programme are really diverse. This year, for example, I think our youngest student is a recent graduate, so kind of 21 or 22, and our most senior member of the cohort is in his 70s. And that's absolutely typical. In addition to that broad range of ages, there's a very diverse range of nationalities and backgrounds. Some, as I say, have recently graduated. So um, some students who have their first degrees um, in subjects other than art history that, and, and gain skills uh, this discipline. But there are others who have careers, um, in some cases, and very successful careers, a really diverse array of to give you that, this year we have people who have worked for years as lawyers, others who've had backgrounds in finance, um, accounting, general business. Um, so it's it's a real mixture. One of our current cohort is a cartoonist for Private Eye magazine. Uh, so that gives you a little flavor. And, and because of that mixture of backgrounds, this is what makes the cohort so dynamic. And However diverse it is in terms of age or experience, what the cohort has in, in common is this interest in our history. And this is a really wonderful sort of unifying factor and the cohort become a really close unit, 
quite quickly and enjoy from certainly conversations I've been having with the current students, the discussions that are offered, not just in the classes that are timetabled by the Institute, but also in their own free time, going to galleries and exhibitions and that sort of thing. So I want to give you a bit of a flavour now about the programme itself, what you can expect to cover over the course of the nine months that you'd be studying with us. And essentially, the graduate diploma breaks down into two components. There is the taught component, which I'm covering in this slide, but there's also the research, independent research component, which is when you lead and, and you choose your own project. And I'll come to that in a few moments. So our timetable is divided into a variety of, of courses and is underpinned by a course which runs after, runs across the, both the autumn and spring semesters, which is foundations. And that is, as its name suggests, a sort of foundational introduction to key periods, um, disciplines, styles in art history. Alongside foundations, we run courses in physical histories, and that's been running this semester. And next term, moving on to exhibiting art. If you ask me what these courses are designed to give you as a student, it is a training as an art historian. So foundations and the um, histories courses, which you'll also be taking, are giving you factual, if you like, information about, as I've said, um, key periods and artists and styles of art. Physical histories is much more geared towards the materiality of art, and that's um, another important tool for art historians. Exhibiting art, as the title suggests, is more looking at curating and how we engage with art and objects in a museum or gallery context. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about each of these, these courses so you have a bit more to understand about how what the components of the course is and how they're taught. So Foundations, as I've said, runs over the both of the semesters, so it runs throughout the duration of the graduate diploma. And I'm giving you a flavour here of what the students are covering this term. And they've had three weeks on classical and Byzantine art. They are just concluding their section on medieval art and are about to move into the final section this semester on the Buddhist art of Asia. So you can get a sense from that, that yes, um, this is broadly chrono chronological this semester, but that is not necessarily the case. And certainly it is not the intention of the foundations course to try and start at the beginning, wherever that might, whenever that might be, and, and work through to the present day. Um, that sort of a survey course wouldn't be possible. So what it tries to do is give you sort of, if you like, launching paths um, over, over different periods of art and, and different um, styles of art um, that will help inform your, your studies over the course of the year. So I, foundations is, if you like, the kind of backbone. And it is taught via lectures, um, typically two lectures a week, and those are complemented by a seminar, a, a sort of talking um, more, more smaller class where you unpick some of the issues that have been introduced in the lectures. In addition to foundations, you take a, a course from either the um, section called approaches um, and histories. Approaches is um, designed to offer some theoretical frameworks within which to study art history. And I'm giving you a few examples of um, courses that are going to be on offer after Christmas for the Graduate Diploma cohort currently. And you'll see they're pretty diverse. Um, I'm going to be teaching the course on um, embodiment, the body and subject, the body as subject and object in medieval art. And these courses are quite text oriented. Yes, we will use objects as case studies, but the idea is to interrogate texts and to interrogate scholars and to understand, say, what looking at medieval art through um, the lens of Orientalism, for example, um, might bring or looking at feminist um, critiques. So that's a way of looking at approaches as a sort of theoretical um, framework. Histories is more um, subject um, and period specific, as you can see, and I've put up here um, the options that are available to our current cohort this semester. 
Uh, and you can see from that that they cover a diverse range of periods as, as well as countries and um, types of art. I should say with both approaches and histories that students are invited to express a preference. Um, we will tell you what the options are going, that are going to be available are and you can express your first and second choice. We can't always promise to give you those. Um, the graduate diploma works on the basis of small group teaching. And obviously that means we have to have spread numbers across, across the cohort and across the year. But we try where we can to make sure you get um, what you want and also to make sure you have a good breadth of topics. The other component of the art history toolkit, if you like, are these other courses, um, physical history and exhibiting art. The graduate diploma students are taking physical histories this semester and this is um, a new course this year and it's an exciting one um, talking to the current cohort they're really enjoying it they have um, so far explored conservation uh, issues with an expert from our um, painting conservation in, in um, easel painting um, department and they've looked at case studies on rothko um, they've then moved on to look at um, wall painting and the challenges with conservation of wall paintings. And here they've been looking at medieval wall paintings um, in this country and also um, uh, abroad. After Christmas um, in the next semester, the cohort will move on to the next module, which is the one more concerned with the role of museums and galleries um, playing um, in curating and displaying objects. Um, and that is of interest, not just to those who are perhaps um, keen to pursue careers in curating, but of more broader interest for us all as, as gallery and museum goers. As I said, the graduate diploma has a taught component, which I've just discussed, but also research, independent research. And this is something which is really popular with, with cohorts year in and year out. This is a substantial research uh, exercise and it is up to you to choose what you'd like to work on the period the artist um, whatever um, you um, have the chance to form research questions and you are paired with uh, a member of the faculty to help you with that process so whilst you come up with the initial idea and the parameters you then have a series of meetings with a, a supervisor effectively to help steer you through the process I'm often asked about what to expect in terms of workload and deadlines. And I thought it would be helpful just to give you a sort of flavor of that now. You will know that the graduate diploma is a full-time course, and that means that you can expect to um, support your, your taught time with hours of personal study as well, um, reading, and that might be also preparation for tasks that are set um, students for seminars. Work that you are given on the graduate diploma breaks down into work that is non-assessed, so part of your learning experience, but also work that is assessed and forms part of your grade at the end of the year. And to give you an idea of how that breaks down, I've put on the screen here the deadlines that the current cohort are working towards. So they have um, for their physical histories module a deadline before the Christmas break and that is assessed by way of a portfolio. It, it includes three pieces of work which they've been producing and working on over the semester. Foundations is assessed by essay. You get to choose the, the topic that you want to write on. So you could choose, for example, this year, this semester, a topic from the classical and Byzantine period or a topic from the medieval art or indeed one from Buddhist art. And that's assessed by, by essay due in January. And same with histories assessed by essay. And then we follow a similar pattern um, after, after Christmas in the second semester with the, the deadline for the assessed essay in May. And the only uh, one of the modules which is assessed by exam is approaches and that, that happens in our exam week in May. This is an example of the timetable that the current cohort have. Now, it's a bit difficult to um, break this down um, quickly in, in, this, um, in the context of this online um, session now, but I'm putting it here to give you a flavor of what to expect in terms of your average week if you are studying here. And let's just take Monday as an example. 
And if you can see that on Monday morning, you have a 10 a.m. foundations, and that is um, the lecture series that I was um, just discussing a few moments ago. And you have two lectures a week. The first is on Monday at 10 o'clock. And this year, the second is on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. You see, moving on to staying with Monday, um, that later in the day, there is um, a physical histories class, uh, at lunchtime and then later in the day there are lectures um the first one at two o'clock is on reality and fantasy and french art and the other one is on the art of contact at four o'clock these are the um, modules whereby you choose which one you're interested in so not all the graduate diploma students will be doing reality and fantasy and french art some will others will be doing the art of contact um, later in the afternoon Others will be doing the um, course, which starts at 10 a.m. on Tuesday morning, which is Beyond the Great Wall, Contemporary Asian Art. The good thing about these courses is, although you are assigned to a specific module, you can audit the lectures in the other modules. So, for example, if you were assigned Beyond the Great Wall, Contemporary Asian Art, there'd be nothing stopping you going to the lecture on Monday afternoon for reality and fantasy and French art, and indeed, if you wanted to, the art of contact later on that same day. So you can you can graze and, and really enjoy um, quite freely the, the range of um, subjects on offer. And then you'll see just moving on to Tuesday, um, uh, another physical history seminar. And then I just wanted to highlight to you at um, the afternoon session, academic skills, because this is something which is really useful, particularly for applicants to the course who have been out of uh, academic studies for some time, perhaps their undergraduate degree has been followed by a period at work or professional life, and it's some years since they've studied. And the academic series um, skills workshops are run by our academic skills tutor here, and they cover a range of activities which are all designed to kind of get you back into the saddle, as it were, um, and feel comfortable with writing in an academic style. This is a rather um, dense slide also to take in, but I'm just showing it to you because it highlights um, the way that the course is assessed and how it is taught. And um, it's a lot to take in, but I want to just show it to you to give you a flavor that it is a mixture. So um, looking at the foundations modules, which um, run across both semesters, as I've explained, a combination of teaching through lectures and discussion classes, and assessment through essays. With the histories and approaches modules, those are taught again through a combination of, of lecture and seminar for histories, whereas the approaches course is taught by seminar. A and the same with, with physical histories and exhibiting art, um, the different methods of teaching and different methods of assessment. But all of these um, are explained clearly and these are, this sort of information is available um, and made clear to you at the outset of the course. In terms of support, you have a personal tutor, which is myself as the course leader, and I meet with students twice a year, once in each semester, but I'm also there for any specific issues or concerns that students have. In addition, there are other support available, particularly geared towards your academic learning, um, and the Royal Literary Fund Fellows are a great resource um, here who can help students who are wanting to improve their writing and they work in conjunction with the study skills um, support tutor who, who runs the academic skills program I was just talking to you about. We have um, colleagues in wellbeing who can support students through issues that come up through the year. And we also have a very active um, students union and career service. So what happens when you finish the graduate diploma? Well, as you'd expect, given the diverse range of ages and experiences and backgrounds of the typical students um, that come here, there isn't one path which suits all. One thing I can say, which is true for all of these students who complete the Graduate Diploma Programme, is you come out of this programme with skills. And I've just put a sample of those skills up on the screen now. These are the sort of skills which some of you may have already um, from, from your careers or from your degrees, but, but they will be particularly focused on over the year. So let's just take a couple. Analyze visual imagery and articulate arguments in writing and presentations. One of the key skills that you'll be learning and refining over the course of your year on the graduate diploma is that of visual analysis. 
that is really the ability to analyze a painting or a sculpture or a building and understand what it can tell you about its meaning. It is not a task of description. It is much more detailed than that. And that's uh, a great skill and a hard skill to learn, but it's something that students really um, refine over the year and, and greatly enjoy. You'll be doing a lot of reading. Um, there are texts that are set for you and that are made available to you week in and week out. So you get very good at reading critically and economically. And again, depending on your background, you may be doing that already in your career, in which case that's great background for preparation for this course. And I won't go through all of these, but I think they are the sort of skills and the sort of experience that you'll gain over this course, which you will find, I think, will be um, enjoyable on a personal level, but also useful in terms of what you may choose as your next step. So what next? What do graduate diploma students typically do? Well, as I've said, this depends on the aspiration of the students when they join the programme. For many, this course is taken with the determined end of pivoting into a career in art history in some form. For others, who perhaps are, have had a long successful career in another discipline, they are not looking to extend their career in art history, they're doing it more for personal engagement. One of the most popular routes and something which current students are coming to see me and talking to me about very actively at the moment is further study. The Courtauld offers a diverse range of special options master's um, programmes and they range from um, medieval art, which I teach, to a whole range of topics and periods. Um, there are over 30 um, available, usually most years. And many of our graduate diploma students want to stay on um, and they apply for courses at the Courtauld. Others apply elsewhere. Other, other offers, uh, other universities offer master's programmes, of course, too. And if you're like me, um, I stayed on and did a master's programme here at the Courtauld and then carried on with a PhD. And that's a, a route that others have taken in previous years. For other students of the graduate diploma, their aim is to have a job and to get a career in um, the world of art more broadly. And I've just put some examples up um, here on the kind of things that they may be interested in, curating, working in an auction house, education, writing. There's a whole range of options that are available um, with the skill set that I've just described, but, but also the paths that people are choosing. Many of the graduate diploma students go back to what they were doing before they came to the Courtauld. Um, in some cases, they've taken a sabbatical from their careers. In others, they are looking to have a break um, or to maybe um, focus on a different, different area in their career. So that's also an option. Um, but for others, um, there are other roles in, as volunteers in museums and galleries, um, or just the sheer enjoyment um, of studying hard over a year and the connection you make with the cohort. I should just point out that we have a very um, engaged career service here and the careers advisor offers appointments one-on-one, -on -one, um, interview practice, as well as uh, a lot of online support and resources. Um, she and I are going to be running a session for the current graduate diploma cohort tomorrow on the process of applying for an MA. That's not just at the Courtauld, we're going to be considering the question of should I apply for an MA, what are the benefits, and, and going through some of the pros and the cons. Um, so there is a range of activities, again, depending on what you're hoping to um, move on to um, after the diploma, are available to you, events that are held here or events that you can attend off-site, as well as the extensive alumni network, of which, of course, you'll become part of when you complete the programme. So I've come to the end of my presentation on what it is that makes the graduate diploma at the Courtauld um, such an enjoyable and engaging experience. And I'm going to hand over now to um, Taka, who's going to take you through um, some of the more um, practical aspects of applying to um, the Courtauld. And Taka, I've realised, of course, that I control the slides, so I will um, click through them and, and um, you tell me if I'm doing the right thing or not. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, hi there, um, my name is Taka. I'm the admissions officer for postgraduate applications um, here at the Courtauld. 
Um, before I start, um, just um, um, I'm just going to remind you: if you've got any questions, please use the Q and A um, function uh, at the bottom um, of the screen by entering your questions there. Um, at the end of this um, presentation, um, we're going to um, we're going to start answering your questions. Yes, just to say there's no questions yet. So please, if you think of anything from what I've said, or you think of anything as Taka speaking, um, do, do pop those in the Q&A. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so um, so this is for um, 2024 entry, um, how to apply. So key dates, um, so applications are currently open. Um, we just opened uh, applications yesterday. So if you're interested, um, please go to the Graduate Diploma um, course page, and then there's a little button um, called um, How to Apply, and you can click that. Um, and then scroll down to that page, and there's a Graduate Diploma um, um, sort of section, and then there's a button called Apply Now. Um, if you click that, it will actually take you to the um, our application portal and then you can start um, your application. So um, the application deadline is actually quite late. Um, so you've got plenty of time um, to prepare your application. Um, it's 19th of April 2024. Um, this is um, because um, some applicants who um, apply for um, the graduate diploma programme, they also want to apply for the um, MA History of Art course. Um, so we just like to just um, allow that to happen. So hence, um, graduate diploma deadline is slightly later than other MA courses. Um, just to let you know, we won't um, start assessing your applications until the deadline's passed. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you apply, if you submit your application now, or if you submit your application in April or March. Um, so um, just do take your time um, and just prepare for your application. Um, so from May onwards, we're gonna start offering places. Um, then you can just, um, you can see um, what sort of um, process um, that needs to be uh, followed. Um, in the offer letter, we normally specify the date you need to accept the offer. And normally uh, accepting the offer means um, paying a deposit um, for, the, um, for the offer. Um, next slide, please. Sorry, Taka, my um, screen is frozen. Oh. It was mine yesterday. <laughs> I don't know why that's happened. Try. No. Well, it won't let me go backwards or forwards. Um, don't worry, shall I just um shall I just talk about it? I think if you can just talk I, I can I tell you what, I've got the slides in front of me um printed out so I can tell you what what, what we should be looking at in terms of um the information that would be up on the screen. Yep. And the next thing I was you were going to talk about was the entry requirements, Taka. What what are yep. the grades that you need to get on the program? Yep. Yeah, um how yeah, so hey, um so um entry requirements, um so UK qualifications. Um, students have typically achieved a good 2-1 in their bachelor's degree, um, considered to be an overall average of 65% or above. Um, due to the nature of this programme, um, we won't specify what type of degree. Um, it can be a law degree, it can be biology, it, it can be um, science, um, it can be anything. As long as you um, completed um, a degree um, in sort of um, different subject, um, we welcome um, your applications. And when it comes to over, um, overseas qualifications, um, it's equivalent to a good 2-1 in a UK first degree. For example, it's um, GPA 3.5 or above. Um, for American students. Um, if you're not 100% sure what um, that means um, in your country, 
um, please send me an email and I'm happy to answer uh, your questions. Um, so um, another thing I would like to talk about is um, sort of funding opportunities. Um, students on this programme are not eligible for funding options and this includes our scholarships. Um, We've got scholarships called quarter scholarships um, or UK government funding, which is master's loan um, or student loan. And um, unfortunately, um, students on this program are not eligible um, for those options. Um, Taka, could you say something, um, unless anything else to say about funding, about the um, nuts and bolts of the application, in particular the, the personal statement, perhaps, and the written work sample? Yeah. Um, so, um, personal statement, um, so you've got 600 um, word limit, um, you can talk about why um, you are interested in applying for this programme and also the court hold. Um, and just, um, we like to actually know your experiences, like, um, um, as Teresa uh, talked about earlier, um, we've got um, different sort of various um, students, uh, so, um, students from various backgrounds like academically or professionally and um, we like to know why you would like to um, study history of art um, so we can we can sort of um, see how you're going to thrive on this course and um, also um, so you need to as part of your application you need to submit um, a written sub sample um, this is um, to assess your academic writing skills. Um, so it's um, to submit. Um, and if you've been out of um, academic environment for a very long time, um, we recommend going to a gallery or museum and they sort of find two different artworks and start analysing and also start the comparison, um, and you can actually write um, for that um, as an essay. Um, so we normally ask um, for a sort of chapter of your dissertation from your degree. Um, and it, this is just to judge um, for um, your academic writing skills. So it doesn't have to be conclusive. It can be just one chapter. But if you like to um, write about our history, uh, that's brilliant. Um, you do not have to, um, but um, it is it does actually help us um, to sort of um, assess um, your academic writing skills and your interest in art history, um, if it can be a um, subject. But but it's not essential. Um, anything and else? The, Taka, uh, the only thing I was going to ask you just to um, uh, just to um, address is just the academic transcript and the um, academic references as well, please. Yeah, um, so academic transcript. Um, so it is um, your final transcript that we request. Um, if you are currently studying a degree, and um, we ask for a an, an interim um, transcript, um, which you can request from your um, and from your university. Um, if you if you studied um, a degree a long long time ago and you can't um, ask you can't actually um, obtain obtain a transcript, um, that's fine. Um, but we need proof that you completed that degree. So we need some sort of confirmation that you have actually completed your degree. Um, if it was twenty years ago, um, it might be quite difficult to get a sort of detailed transcript. Um, but I, if you don't have a certificate, I would definitely contact um, your university that you graduated from. Um, hopefully they've got your record and they can um, issue some sort of confirmation. Um, that's a... Just please um, send us an email and I'm happy to answer any questions regarding that. Um, also, um, we request two um, academic references. Um, they don't have to come from any art or just the art history background. Um, they can be professors um, from your university or just um, your tutors um, from your university. Um, they need to attest um, your um, academic potential. And um, we've got um, questions that we send for referees on our website um, under um, 
and the application guidance. So if you're interested, um, it's in the sort of FAQ section. So um, you can just have a look what sort of questions we send to referees. And they normally have five days to submit after you submit your application. Um, and then it's a sort of automatic process. Um, but, um, Jan sorry, it's not January. Um, um, academic um, staff are quite busy um, writing and in sort of marking essays and stuff like that. So I would recommend uh, contacting them about like sort of four weeks in advance and to let them know that you are submitting um, your application. So we would actually send a um, reference request uh, to them. And uh, so they won't be surprised when they receive an email. Okay, um, I think that's probably it. Um, yeah, I think I think that's that's great. And um, the other point to say um, is that both Taka and I are, um, are very happy to answer any questions, um, not just now. Um, and I'll, we've got a couple in the um, Q and A, which I'll I'll discuss in a minute. But also, if you think of something after um, the session this afternoon. Um, the website has a lot of information on it, but if you can't find it there, then either myself or, or Taka are, are very happy to, to try and help you. Yep. Um, just to, I forgot to actually say my email address um, is pgadmissions at courtauld.ac.uk. It's pgadmissions at courtauld.ac.uk. Um, if you... Um, if you Google admissions email contact um, on the website, um, it should actually come up. Um, I bet, I bet it is. It was actually part of the slide, but I'm of sorry. course it was. It was <laughs> yes. my last slide that had our contact details on it, yes. and I apologise. No. My my we'll screen sorry, is still frozen, and I can't can't move forward. But um, yes, we can. We'll make sure that 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 I mean that information is quite um, readily um, visible. And my email is my first name Teresa T. -E R E S A dot lane L A N E at courtold dot A C dot UK and and similarly I'm very happy to to hear from you if you have specific questions. So I think we will um, now turn to questions and and thank you um, to those of you that are, that are posted in the Q and A. Um, we've got a couple of great questions here which um, I will I will share um, and um, I will um, have a go at answering and then Taka please. Um, Feel free to, to, to join in um, if, I've, if I've missed anything. So we have a question here um, from somebody who is a recent BA graduate in humanities um, and deciding between applying for the graduate diploma and the MA course, or, or the MA course rather. And the question is, may I ask for your insight on the difference between these two courses as potential entry points to art history respectively? Um, this is a really great question. Uh, and as Taka says, um, we do find that um, applicants for the graduate diploma commonly um, face this question. Um, on the face of it, um, anyone who has an undergraduate degree um, in, in a humanities subject can apply straight for our MA programme. Um, that, that, um, that is how it works. However, um, what uh, the admissions um, are looking for in terms of applying for an MA is, is um, the ability to be able to start the MA programme with, the, 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 if you like, a sort of toolkit of skills. And this is where the graduate diploma, I think, really comes in, because even if you've graduated quite recently in a degree, and, and you know, humanities is a good example, many of our current cohort come from, they've studied history or English or something like that sort. Some of the skills that you're learning on the graduate diploma are, are quite specific to, to art history and are topics that you will not cover necessarily in a, in a non-art history um, undergraduate degree. Um, a really good example of that is um, visual analysis. How do you deal with, with the visual, the images? And it's really interesting having conversations with the current cohort. Several of them have said to me um, in tutorials um, that I had earlier this semester, you know, I spent a lot of time either as an undergraduate or in their careers writing and, and digesting written material and ideas and text. But the real challenge and what they've kind of had to had to learn over the course of the um, graduate diploma is how to engage with the visual, how to use visual in, you know, how to use objects, how to use a sculpture uh, in your argument, how to build an argument based on close looking. And so these are the sorts of skills which you will learn um, and refine over the graduate diploma. So there is, um, I suppose, a sort of way that um, the 
the students who say, uh, as, as, as you indicate in this question, if you've come from a recently um, graduating, you will have probably less need to be um, having a refresher course on academic skills. So for example, you might be more familiar with how to use um, referencing styles like Chicago or the equivalent for footnotes or image captions. So from that point of view, yes, you, know, you would be much more ready to start an MA, um, but it's really whether you feel that you have the sort of portfolio of skills that will enable you to participate um, and to be able to um, manage the, the requirements of, of the MA. Uh, certainly, I would say, speaking from personal experience, but also from the, you know, the experience of uh, managing the cohorts over the last couple of years, the, the diploma is a very rigorous programme. It's a challenging program. You will have seen that you are straying and um, into broad range of, of um, periods, styles, and you have to be quite nimble in your in your thinking. And that's a really great training for an MA because whilst the MA options certainly at the Courtauld are taught on the basis of, of special options, so you may focus on after the Middle Ages, and you would be studying purely after the Middle Ages. These sort of toolkit of skills that you'll have picked up over the course of the diploma will be really helpful um, for you as part of that learning. Um, Taka, is there anything you would like to add on that point about MA versus um, Grand Dip? No, I, I think I think you captured it really well. Thank you. Um, I must apologise because there's a helicopter hovering just <laughs> above the, my office. So if you can hear that, that that is um, that's what's happening. Um, we've got a couple of other questions um, and. Um, I would um, take this one now, which is um, asking to learn more about the physical histories and the exhibiting art exams. Uh, so these uh, modules, physical histories and exhibiting art, are both examined by portfolio. So they are not examined by, by a formal exam as such. They are um, project-based learning um, whereby you complete three varying, um, well, the, the, the uh, word counts vary, and three different types of task over the course of the semester for both the physical histories and the exhibiting art um, modules. So it's a sort of gradual process and you're guided as to the choice of, of topic. Um, so for example, I can tell you um, for the um, uh, part of the physical histories program that's been looking at the conservation of easel painting, students were asked to choose a painting that was sort of deemed um, not, not, not in good enough condition to be on display in a gallery or a museum and to consider conservation um, techniques with that object. So that's the kind of thing that you'd be looking at. Um, but, it, but that is um, made clear to you at the outset of the semester and you work um, over, over the course of the semester on those, on those um assessments and both the physical histories and exhibiting art have a lecture and seminar or discussion class component so you also have access to a um as in addition to the lecture you also will be um, engaging with uh, with someone else who can kind of help you with this process of, of the assessments uh, a couple of other questions um Someone is asking, please, Taka, for clarification on the word limit on the personal statement, because the website is saying that it is 500 words. Um, and I think you mentioned it was 600. Yeah, that was my mistake. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, sorry I, I got mixed up with other, other, other sort of programs because um, one, one program was actually taking 600 words. Uh, anyway, I'm really sorry. Um, so I take it back. It's a 500 word limit. I'm really sorry. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. So, yeah, 500 words um, personal statement. And I think what Taka said um, really beautifully sort of sums up um, what we're looking for in that personal statement. You know, what is it that is making you want to study um, at the court hall? Yes, on the one hand. But what is it about the graduate diploma um, that, that, you know, appeals to you and that, that you can bring? That That's really what we're looking for. Um, I hope that answers that. Um, and then the um, at the moment, the final question is from somebody who um, admits to graduating a long time ago with long in capital letters um, and also someone who lives in um, outside London uh, and asking um, they have a base in London, but asking how much time they would need to spend in London. Um, is there an option to do any of the teaching online? Um, this is a really good question. Um, the short answer is no, not really. I mean, 
the graduate diploma is is a is a full time um, face to face um, course. We do have um, a number of the courses of the lectures, I should say, that are recorded, and um, they are, but they are recorded on the understanding that the idea is that people attend in person. Um, that that is really the requirement because. Um, to get the most from this course, as I've said, it is also about engaging with the cohort and, and the, the experience you can only get from attending in person. We recognise, however, with the graduate diploma, um, depending on life stages, that some people may have additional responsibilities. Some people may be trying to um, uh, balance a bit of limited um, part time work from their previous um, life or, or uh, carrying on with that. Others may have caring responsibilities, for example. So we are very sympathetic to um, one-off um, situations where students can't attend lectures or seminars. Um, but we do have an 80% uh, attendance requirement over the course of the year. So we would expect um, to see you. Um, we would want to see you. Um, you would have a timetable which... Um, you're certainly not going to be need to be in classes from nine to five every day. As I've said, um, you, you might have a day where you have a, a 10 a.m. lecture on a Monday for foundations. And then later that day, you might have a, a discussion class. So your day might have only two taught components, but you're balancing that with the reading and the preparation, which obviously can be done remotely. You don't need to be here for that. But I would think that you would need to expect to be in London. I mean, certainly there is a student this term, for example, this, this year who's based in Dorset, and that's where she lives. So again, a long way from London, but she's managing the requirements of the course by staying in London with her daughter um, midweek uh, and, and being able to attend. Things like train strikes happen, of course, and that's meant she's had to miss a few lectures, um, and that's where the recordings can help. But but fundamentally, um, it is it is a, a, a programme which really um, benefits from from active participation and from being on site. So thank you, and I hope that that answers that. A um, couple of other questions come up. Um, uh, Taka, one for you. Um, someone is asking, please, for what the cost, um, the fees are for the graduate diploma. I don't have that information to hand. I don't know whether you do. Yeah, I do. Um, so um, for 2024-25 academic year, um, home students pay £14,700. Um, international students pay £26,300. Thank you, Taka. And all this information is hopefully on the website. Yeah, um, it is on the website, yes. yes. Thank you. Um, so, um, and then um, what looks like the final question, um, and again, Taka, I think this is one yep. for you. Uh, will graduate diploma students be able to apply for student accommodation through the University of London? Um, yes. Um, sorry, I actually, this is one thing I actually missed um, from my presentation. Um, so postgraduate students um, are eligible to apply um, for accommodations through us. Um, so University of London, um, they have um, accommodation called intercollegiate halls. Um, so they've got a few different halls um, in central London area. Um, so, but um, our students um, are not eligible to apply directly to University of London. Um, what happens is University of London will allocate a um, few rooms um, from different halls um, closer to our campuses. Um, and then um, our students can apply through us. Um, and the applications are normally um opened um from late spring um and we normally um notify all students or offer holders uh, that applications are open and then you can you can start your applications um generally speaking we prioritize um um international students um who currently live in abroad or who never lived in the UK before uh, or never studied in the UK before, who just don't really know how to rent a flat or just apartment, um, that sort of um, thing. But um, even if you're based in the UK, um, of course you can apply. Um, and then, you know, if there's an um, available room, I'm, I'm sure we can actually allocate that for you. Um, but um, there's a sort of um, limitation to numbers of rooms that we are actually allowed to have. Um, yep. So 
Thank you, Taka. Um, I'm just going to send our email addresses in response to the questions um, to, to reiterate um, what I've just said. And I do apologise that I haven't been able to um, move my presentation on to, to give you our contact details. But um, I think there are no more questions that I can see in the Q&A. So um, unless anyone has a, a um, something they've just thought of, please do feel free to contact uh, either Taka or myself and we will give you any um, additional information that we can. But we hope that we've given you between us a flavour of what makes the Graduate Diploma such an exciting programme to study on and we look forward to receiving your applications. Thank you very much for watching this afternoon. Bye-bye.